Warner. And the exclusive Imperial, the five great cars of the forward look. Chrysler Corporation presents... Climax. Tonight, starring... Dana Foch. Vincent Price. Host for Chrysler Corporation, Bill Mundigan. Good evening. You know, we so often read in the newspapers these days about tragic hunting accidents. Now, in the case that I'm referring to, the evidence was so clear the whole inquiry lasted only a few minutes. The verdict? Accidental death. Then, seven years later, an unforeseen chain of events brought about our climax tonight. It's called Night of Execution, adapted by James P. Cavanaugh. dark in here. Hmm? Oh, yes, it is, isn't it? No, don't, Bob. Well, not for a few minutes, anyway. Emily, why is it so difficult for you to tell me what you've been trying to for the past hour? It's not easy. I haven't seen you for seven years. That's a long time. Your choice, not mine. Look, if you wanted to cut yourself away from everyone connected with the past, you had that right. I didn't have any choice. Didn't you, Emily? What made you do it? It was the only way that I could stay with Keith. How is he, Emily? I haven't seen him for so long, I doubt if I'd even recognize him. Let's see, he must be 18 now. 17. Seven years since I've seen him. You know, I think he was the only kid I was ever really fond of. He was very fond of you, too. Yes, I know. That's why it was always so difficult to have to hear news of him through strangers. What'd you hear? Oh, nothing. He was going to school, things like that. I never heard anything about you, though. Apparently, you were doing nothing. Very little, except taking care of Keith. You know, I never realized how much more he looks like you than Gideon, even in that picture. Yes, Gideon never forgave me for that. Gideon never forgave anybody anything. He wasn't a very forgiving man. Oh, I'm sorry, Emily. It was a little tactless of me to bring that up. I... No, no, it's, it's all right, Bob. I, I don't mind talking about it. It's why I asked you here today. I, I want you to hear the whole story, not just bits and pieces of it. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I want to, I do. That, that's, that's my favorite picture of Keith. It was taken on his 10th birthday. It was right after that that I realized that things couldn't go on the way they'd been going. We were living at the Rome estate then. That huge house and those enormous grounds, just for the three of us. Well, Keith had wanted a, a rabbit for a long time, so I got him one for his birthday. Oh, he adored it. You said you wanted these hedges trimmed. I said, go work someplace else. Yes, sir. Do you spend all of your time down here now, Keith? I... 
I just wanted to be sure he wasn't hungry. Well, then what are you looking so guilty about? Stand up when I'm talking to you. Couldn't be that you suddenly remembered that you were supposed to go hunting with me this morning, could it? You did forget it, didn't you, Keith? Yes, sir. I... I guess I did. You don't have to lie to me, Keith. You just didn't want to go. I don't like hunting. I'm sorry, Dad. I try to, but I just don't. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> Giving you a gun for your birthday was apparently a waste of time. Your mother had the better idea. I'll go with you tomorrow, Dad. I'll try to like it. I really will. You're very fond of this rabbit, aren't you, Keith? Yes, sir. It doesn't do to become too fond of things, or people for that matter. Makes you too vulnerable. Vulnerable? Weak, if you prefer. My father taught me that a long time ago. And I've always been very grateful to him. Keith, I think we should still go hunting. Right here. What do you mean? Let him out of his cage. He's tame. He won't be much of a challenge, but then you're not much of a shot. You, you mean you want me to shoot him? I mean, I want you to shoot him. Oh, no. Keith, you know I don't like to tell you twice to do things. Please, I can't. Would you like me to? No. He might get away from you, he won't from me. Please don't, Dad. Why should you want to? Because I'm trying to teach you something, Keith. Something you're too young to understand now, but you will one day, and you'll be grateful to me just as I was grateful to my father. You've got to trust me, Keith. I... I want to. Good. Then do it. I'll open the cage. Might as well give the rabbit a sporting chance. Are you ready? you could. It's going to be uphill work with you, Keith. But I'm not discouraged. There's plenty of time. He didn't even blame Gideon. He blamed himself. He felt he'd failed his father again. That was what frightened me. That was when I knew it had to stop. Gideon had turned one of the rooms downstairs into what was practically a gymnasium. He made the boy go there every day. What's the matter, Keith? Nothing, sir. Not tired, are you? No, I'm, I'm fine, Dad. Good. And hit it as though you really meant it. You've forgotten what I told you. Just pretend it's somebody you really dislike. Come on, when you hit it, hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Harder, Keith. Harder, harder. You really hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Can, can we stop now? Oh, what's the matter now? I'm just tired, Dad. Well, that's too bad because you're not going to stop now. Come on, come on. Hit it. Harder. Now we're going to have the tears, huh? Just like yesterday. You not only look like your mother, you act like her, too. What a pity you weren't born a girl. Come on, now, hit it. Uh, get in! I want to talk to you. What are you doing in here? Uh, uh, Keith, darling, go upstairs. You stay where you are, Keith. How many times must I tell you not to interfere? Gideon, the boy's exhausted. Get out of here. Please, don't talk to me like that in front of Keith, Gideon. You stayed out of here as I told you to. I wouldn't have to talk to you at all. The doctor told you he's not strong enough for that sort of thing. I'll make him strong. You can't. No boy of mine is going to be a weakling. Was what you did yesterday to make him strong? Oh, so he told you about that, Yes, he? he told me, and now I'm going to tell you. This has gone as far as it's going to go. I don't want to have to tell you again to get out of here. Gideon, I won't stand this anymore. We're going to have this out once and for all. You heard me out. 
I'm all right, Mother. No kidding, look. I'll wait for you upstairs. Get in. Mrs. Rowan, I'm sorry. I've been waiting all morning to get a chance to talk to you alone. What, what is it, Craig? If it's about the grounds... No, no, it's not about the grounds. Well, whatever it is, can't it wait? I'm not feeling very well, and... He fired me this morning. Oh, Craig, I'm sorry. You've got no right to talk to people like that. I'm a good guardian. I do my work. Oh, Craig. I got mad at the way he talked to me, and I told him off. Well, maybe I did have a couple of drinks, but I wasn't drunk, like I he said. I stopped him once from firing you. You promised then you wouldn't do it again. I tried as hard as I could, but honestly, it ain't all my fault. I know he's your husband, Mrs. Roan, but he ain't like you. He treats people like they were dirt. You should see what he did to the kid yesterday. Well, don't discuss that, Craig. I'm sorry. Won't you, won't you please talk to him? Tell him I didn't mean it. I, I need the job. I'll, I'll speak to him, Craig. I don't think it'll do any good. Craig, I thought I told you this morning to clear out. Give him, he wanted to apologize. I do, Mr. Rowan. I lost my temper. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said what I... You know what you said. You were so drunk, you didn't even know what well, you were I'm doing. Sure you stay out of this. No, I wasn't, Mr. Rowan. Craig, my father used to tell me that the only way to deal with trash was to get rid of it. I include you in that category. I'll give you just five minutes to get out of this house and off these grounds or I'll call the police. Ian, are you all right? But your forehead is so warm. Come here. No, I'm not sick. Well, then we'll take your temperature and make sure. Please don't. Only girls get sick. Oh, darling, that's a silly thing to say. Oh, Keith, please. You do feel feverish. You won't tell him, will you? Please don't tell him, Mother, please. He'll be ashamed of me. So he was already. So he was ashamed of me. Oh, darling. He didn't mean that. Yes, he did. Oh, Keith. Now, now listen to me, darling. Please, don't, don't be upset. Please don't. Your, your father, your father just doesn't understand how young you are, that's all. He doesn't realize you're not able to do the things he wants you to do. I, I try, Mom. I try all the time. I don't want him to be ashamed of me. I want to be like him. I want that more than anything. I didn't go right up to get in then. I couldn't. Keith became very ill. Too ill to be left alone. As soon as I could, I went in to have it out with him. Once and for all. I'm leaving you, Gideon. I'm, I'm taking Keith with me. Just like that? No, no, not just like that. I've never taken our marriage lightly. You know I haven't. I've tried for years to make it work. Well, now I have to think of Keith. So it's all for the good of the boy, hmm? There couldn't possibly be any personal reasons for your suddenly wanting to be free? What's that supposed to mean? I've seen you and your lawyer friend Maxwell together. It's quite obvious what I mean. I've known Bob all my, my life. And very well, too, I have no doubt. You always manage to twist things into something unpleasant, don't you, Gideon? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're free to go whenever you like. But Keith stays with me. You think I'd leave that boy with you? 
Do you think I'd let him be done to like your father did to you? Be careful, Emily. I'm through with being careful. Someone should have said this to you a long time ago. It might have helped to destroy that image you have of your father as a great man. You don't believe it yourself, not really. And you're right not to believe it. I knew him, Gideon. He was a cruel, twisted, destructive man. <laughs> And he's turned you into the same kind of a man. Well, you're not going to do it to Keith because I'm not going to let you. You're right, Emily. You are leaving me. And don't bother to change your mind. Because if you do, I'll throw you out. I swear I will. I'm sorry for you, Gideon. I really am. I'm leaving tomorrow. And if you try to take Keith with you, I'll stop you. By force, if I have to, and I'll back that up with the law. I'll get a court order giving me full custody of the boy. You couldn't get any such thing. Don't be a fool, Emily. I have a great deal of influence in this part of the country and a great deal of money. You have neither. I'm not going to let you do it. You can't stop me. There's no way you can stop me, short of killing me. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Night of Execution. And now your host, Bill Lundigan. You were my last hope that day I came to you for advice. I wanted so desperately for you to tell me Gideon couldn't do what he threatened. I wanted you to tell me there was some other way to save Keith. But I want you and all the time you were talking, I kept trying to shut out of my mind what Gideon had said. So, that's the way it adds up. He'll do it. He's capable of doing anything. Even to creating a scandal between you and me so that he can prove to everyone he's the one that should have custody of the boy. Well, how could he even say such a thing, Bob? It's not true. It doesn't What's make any sense. What's you got to do with it? He's got the money and the power, and I'll use them. You wouldn't stand a chance. In other words, there's no legal way that I can stop him? No, the custody laws in this state are pretty tough. You might just as well face it. Oh, Bob. I've, I've got to get Keith away from him. Don't you understand that? I have to. Because the thing that I've been so afraid of is beginning to happen. Keith, Keith wants his father's approval so desperately. He wants so much to be like him. Well, that's only the beginning, but it's got to stop there. Look, don't you realize what will happen if you force the issue? Get in or get complete custody of Keith. Oh, look, Emmy, it's not easy for me to say this, feeling the way I do about you, but you can't leave Gideon. Because of Keith, you've got to stay. Don't you see that's why I must leave him? Oh, Bob, if it were just me, it would be different. I, I married Gideon. I even knew a little what he was like. You tried to change him. At 19, you think you can do anything? Well, I wish there was something I could do to help, but I can't. Emily, you're the only one that can help this situation by staying. But staying isn't any solution, Bob. Besides, I, I don't think he'd let me even if I wanted to, not after this afternoon. No, no, there, there has to be some other way. Oh, uh, thanks for letting me know where I stand. Look, Emily, what are you going to do? I, I don't know. Maybe you should try talking to him again. There must be some way of reaching him. I don't think there is. But I'll try. I'll do it. I don't think I really knew what I was doing. That day. I can't even remember what I thought about on the way home. Or if I thought at all.
Hello? I want to talk to Mr. Rome. Oh, it, it won't help to talk to Mr. Rome, Craig. What do you mean it won't help? Who is this? Please don't make any trouble. I don't want to make any trouble for you, Mrs. Rome. It's him. Forget about him. Forget about the job. Look, look for something else. Sure, sure. Forget about it. Forget about the job. That's easy for you. It's not easy for anyone. Look, I'll send you some money to tide you over until you get something else. Good luck, Craig. Good luck. <laughs> That's a joke, that is. Good luck. I'm sorry, Craig. Uh, goodbye. Gideon, I want to talk to you. What's the matter, Emily? Nothing. I... I just want to speak to you for a moment, if I may. There's nothing to say. There must be. I'm sorry if what I said about your father hurt your feelings. Why? Because it isn't true? I don't know it's true. That's not the point. It's just that it's not right to strike at people where they're, they're vulnerable. I'm sorry, Gillian. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm also sure that you've been talking with your friend Maxwell. And he's told you I can do exactly what I said I would do. That's the real reason you're apologizing, isn't it? No! Gideon, I want to try once more. But he did tell you that, didn't he? Yes, he did. He's a better lawyer than I thought. I hope he also told you that the best thing for you to do was to clear out of here. How could I do that, Gideon? How, how could I leave Keith? I don't know how. That's your problem. All I know is that you're going to do it, because I'm going to see to it that you do it. Gideon, I'm sure there must be some way we could meet on a common ground and work this thing out. We loved each other once, surely that... We married each other. That's not quite the same thing. I loved you when I married you, Gideon. Why? Why? Well, why does anyone love anyone else? Maybe because you needed love so desperately, that's very appealing. That was the last thing in the world I needed, love. Oh, oh you're wrong. You, you did, Gideon. You still do. You just can't seem to accept it, that's all. You know, you amuse me, Emily. You always manage to find some noble reason why you do things. You married me for my money. It's as simple as that. That's not true. Emily, I have no intention of arguing with you about it. It's all settled. It's not settled, Gideon. You get out of here and stop bothering me with all this nonsense about how much you love me and all the rest of it. You should have had love a long time ago when you could still be reached. The way Keith can be reached. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? So that you could spoil him with all your stupid theories. I'm not spoiling you're it. You're so right you're not, because you're not going to be around to do it. Now get out of here. Gideon. Incidentally, I'll be glad to arrange with my lawyer to give you an allowance, provided you make no attempt to see the boy. And I uh, also bought this for you. It's a plane ticket for tomorrow afternoon.
and saw Gideon leaving, I knew suddenly how I was going to do it. every morning. It was years since we'd gone hunting together, but my gun was still in the rack with the others. It was the mate of his. He bought them for us both when we were first married. They were exact duplicates. the inquiry was into his death. I think that I should... couldn't believe that no one would question the verdict of accidental death while hunting, but they didn't. The whole inquiry only lasted a few minutes. Then I was free to go. Emily, I'll drive you home. Oh, there's no need to bother. The car's downstairs, Bob. No bother. I, I'd like to. I'd like to be alone, Bob. Thank you very much. Sure. I went home and I waited. For months, I didn't see anyone. I didn't go anywhere, I didn't do anything. Do you remember how upset you were that day you came into the house? Emily, how long are you gonna go on like this? Like what, Bob? Like somebody in a trance. Yes, I... I suppose that's the way it must seem. That's the way it is. Look, what's it all about? You don't go anywhere, you don't see anyone. You wouldn't have even seen me if I hadn't insisted on it. Bob, I... Oh. Look, Emily, I... I don't mean to bully you. I know that Gideon's death was a shock, but let's be honest about it. It's no great loss, not to anyone, especially you. Why are you pretending that it is? I'm not pretending that it is. Yes, you are. And you're the last one I would have expected it from, Emily. You know, that's one of the things that always irks me the most, the way people forget all about what a person was when they died, as though death were some sort of a sanctifying ceremony that wiped out everything they were in life that wasn't good and noble. It doesn't, Emily. Gideon's death doesn't change what he was. And the truth of the matter is that it solved many things. You're a whole lot better off. Am I, Bob? Sure you are. You know what would have happened if he hadn't been killed in that accident? Oh, yes, I know. Well, then snap out of it. Get out of here. Go someplace. Take a trip. Take Keith to Europe. But get out of this house. I can't. Why not? I just can't. Look, what are you waiting for? Emily, 
Gideon's dead. He can't do any more harm now. You're safe. Keith's safe. But you've got to stop sitting here like someone whose life is all over. I'll, I'll, I'll try, Bob. I'll try. You'll go away for a little while? I'll think about it. Oh, Bob. Don't, don't think I don't appreciate what you're trying to do for me. I do, even if I don't seem to. Sure, Emily. I'll call you the first thing in the morning. Goodbye, Bob. Bye. You were right. I was waiting. And in spite of what you said, I kept right on waiting. I kept telling myself that the inquest was over. But I knew that didn't mean much. A chance word, a, a careless move, anything might reopen it. I knew that too. I never opened a door that I didn't expect to see a policeman standing there. It seemed to me it had to happen that way. And we'll have dinner outdoors. Still light enough. We can do it. Is Mrs. Rowan in? Who shall I say is calling, please? I'm from the district attorney's office. Oh, will you wait a moment, please? Mrs. Rowan, there's a gentleman to see you. Uh, did, did he give you his name? No, ma'am, he just said he was from the district attorney's office. Sh show him in, will you? What does he want, mother? Oh, Jane, wait a minute. Uh, take Keith upstairs, will you? Darling. How oh, can I stay here? It's a business matter, darling. Scoot. What? Will you be long? Oh. like to see you. If you could come along with me now. Yes, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get my coat. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to the third act of Night of Execution. the district attorney's office that day. I knew they'd found out. Won't you sit down? It was out of my hands now. Thank you. I'm sorry we had to do it this way, but I suppose you know why I've sent for you. There is no question about making these charges stand up, but a good defense lawyer might be able to avoid the death penalty. This friend of yours, uh, Robert Maxwell, he's pretty good. Does, does he know? Oh, no, there was no reason to uh, tell him about it until someone was willing to pay his fee. I think it's very decent of you to want to pay it, Mrs. Rowan, just because Craig happened to work for you once. Will it work for me? Well, he was your gardener for a number of years, but even so. His mother asked me to send for you, so I did. Mrs. Craig asked you to send for me? Yes. I don't understand. Did you bring Craig in? It's a pretty sordid story. He's been arrested several times for being drunk and disorderly. Apparently, he's got a very violent temper, and all the drinking didn't help any. The girl he went out with said something he didn't like. 
and he hit her. And he kept on hitting her until she was dead. Oh, he hasn't denied it. He told us the whole story as soon as we picked him up, so it's an open and shut case. But just the same, he should have a good lawyer. A lawyer? Well, since his mother said you'd help, if you want to, you could do that for him. You could get him a good lawyer. It'd probably be better that way than if the court had to appoint one. Oh, yes, of course. I, I will. I will. Good. Craig. Craig, Mrs. Rowan is going to hire you a lawyer. Thank you, Mrs. Rowan. I didn't want to get you mixed up into any of this, but it'll make my old lady feel better if I got a lawyer. I'd, I'd like to shake hands with you, Mrs. Rowan, but maybe you wouldn't want to shake hands with... Mrs. Rome. Oh, Mrs. Craig. I've been waiting to speak to you. I tried to stop you on the way in, but they wouldn't let me. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's all right. Uh, could you sit here a minute with me? Of course. Mrs. Craig, I know this must be dreadful for you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Not just for being sorry, but for taking the trouble to come down here. That's why I waited, to thank you. Oh, you, you didn't have to. Maybe I didn't have the right even to ask you. He's your son, you have the right to do anything you think will help him. Yes, he's my son. But it's so strange, Miss Rowe. You have a child, you do everything you can, everything you know how, and you think you know him. Then one day he goes out of the house, when he comes back, he's a stranger. A man you know nothing about. Not the boy that went out a little while before. You don't even know why. Mrs. Craig, I... I keep asking myself what I did wrong, but I... I don't know the answer. I just don't know. You did nothing wrong. Maybe not. Anyway, it, it's too late now. Oh, it's not too late. We'll get the best defense lawyer possible. You'll see. Oh, that's good of you. I want that. But all the lawyers in the world can't help. He took a life. Only God has a right to do that. And when you do something like that, you're punished. Even if the law don't do anything to you, you punish yourself, and that's even worse. You can never find a moment's peace, ever. No. I guess you, you couldn't. Well, I, I won't keep you any longer. I just wanted you to know how grateful I am. And with a good lawyer, maybe he'll be saved. I mean, maybe they'll just put him in prison. Then at least he'll have time to make his peace with God. That Emily, you did everything you could, more than anyone had a right to expect. Does he know the appeal's been denied? Yeah, I've just been up to see him. I had to tell him. 
Must be terrible for him waiting. I guess that's the worst part, the waiting. Yeah, pretty rugged, all right. But after all, he did kill a girl. He never denied that. There were only something we could do to make it easier for him. Well, as a matter of fact... Uh, Is there? When I told him his appeal had been denied, he asked if he could see you. He asked to see me? Yeah. But I don't think you should, Emily. It's pretty dreadful up there. Oh, no. If it had happened any, of course I... I don't know. You've had your share of these past few months. First Gideon's death, and now this mess. Don't you worry about me. I'll be all right. Of course I'll go. Pretty grim. I'm all right. I'll just look around Keith for a moment. You don't have much time, son. No, stop saying that. I have to say it, because it's true. There's so little time for you to make your peace with God. Why don't you go away? Just go away and leave me alone. All right, son. But I'll be praying for you. Praying that you see the light before it's too late. Your time is up, Mrs. Craig. Yes, I know. Mr. Maxwell said that you wanted to see me, Craig. Yeah. Oh, Craig, I'm so sorry. We did everything we could. Everybody says they're sorry, but mostly they don't mean it. I guess you do. They tell you the appeal was denied? Yes. That means tonight I get it. Nothing can stop it. Funny, I'm not scared. I'm not anything. It's like I was dead already. What was it that you wanted? If it's about your mother, no. of course you... No, I'm not worried about her. She's got her God. She doesn't need anything else. She's never needed anything else. Well, what was it then? It's nothing you have to do. It's something I have to do. Something I want to do. I... I want to tell him the truth about how your husband died. Mrs. Rowan, why shouldn't I? I'm going to die anyway for killing Sheila. What else can they do to me when I tell them that I killed Mr. Roan, too? But you didn't. You didn't do it. I went to him that morning to ask him to give me back my job. And I lost my temper when he said he wouldn't. The gun was there. I shot him. Then I fixed it to make it look like it was an accident. And that's what everyone thought it was. An accident. You were in the woods that morning? I was there. You saw it all? I saw it all. Why should you do this for me? Who knows why people do things? 
I could never understand why you were so kind to me. You had nothing to gain. You had no reason at all. That was different. Not so different. Because I ain't got anything to lose. And you have. What about the kid? That's what I've been afraid of since that morning. Let me do it for you, will you? Let me do one good thing for someone else. Please? When I confess, when I tell them I did it, that'll be the end of it. They can't touch you no matter what shows up. And you won't have to be afraid all the time. You've got the kid to think about. Please, you're always doing good things for people. Let me do this for you. Let me do one decent thing. What else can they do to me? They can only kill you once. Your time is up, Mrs. Brown. Let him do it. I let him do it. Well, now I understand everything that I couldn't understand before. Why you shut yourself off from everybody. Why you wouldn't see anybody, not even me. Because although you were safe, you had to punish yourself. For seven long years, you had to punish yourself. Why? I could never forgive myself. But why are you telling me this after all those years? Because I'm giving myself up. There's no reason not to now. Keith is dead. He was flying home. And the, the plane crashed. Oh, he, he got out all right. He wasn't even hurt. But there was a man in there. And he went in to save him. While he was inside the plane. It exploded. So, you see, I have to give myself up. It's the only way I'll find any peace. Will you do one more thing for me, Bob? Will you uh, call them up? I can't seem to make myself do it.
Today it's been our pleasure to give you a glimpse of what's coming to you in the cars of the forward look 56 from Chrysler Corporation. We've hinted at a bold new concept in styling the flight sweep. We've told you to expect dramatic new performance from push button power flight, from more powerful engines and improved brakes. You've seen new safety features for your greater protection. But believe me, until you've actually seen and driven these 1956 cars, you can't realize how advanced they are, how far ahead you will be when you are one. I'm sure of stars just two weeks from tonight, on October 6th, you'll get your first look on television at one of these great new Chrysler Corporation cars with dramatic flight sweep styling. Don't miss it. You know, at one time or another, I think you would find that every American home had in it a copy of one or more of the 50 books written by Jack London. The titles are as familiar as the names of old friends, the Sea Wolf, Heart of the Wild, and so forth. And yet, none of these tales has the stark drama of the life story of Jack London, the man. And next week on Climax, we bring you that story, Sailor on Horseback, based on the bestseller by Irving Stone. And here is Lloyd Nolan, who plays Jack London. Lloyd, Hi, awesome. nice to have you with us tonight. Thank you. And I know in the days of rehearsal that you probably got quite close to the story of Jack London. Will you tell us what kind of a man he was? Well, Bill, Jack London was a one of the most dynamic men that ever lived. The man was born in abject poverty. He was a thief, a hobo, a, mm -hmm. a prospector, and a sailor. And, and yet he became the richest and most famous writer in the world. Well, now, uh, what about those two very charming young ladies who are going to play opposite you? Well, Mercedes McCambridge is playing my sister Eliza, and Mary Sinclair will be Charmian, my wife. Well, thank you again, Lloyd. I'll be real happy to see you next week. Thanks, Bill, for Mercedes and Mary. Next on Climax, Sailor on Horseback, the fantastic life story of Jack London, adapted by Paul Monash. This is Bill Lundigan saying thank you, and don't miss it. Happy to welcome a new station to the Climax Network, WTWO-TV, Channel 2 in Bangor, Maine. Climax has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. The forward look. Mark Gilmore speaking. Portions of this program were pre-recorded. Climax has been selected for viewing by America's Armed Forces Overseas and was a CBS Television Network production.